Welcome to the dark dimension of the Spondos. It's a sunny day. Yes. Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. Um, man, we had a ton, had a ton of throwaways to do. And my friend and I, who's the manager, we were working on it together. So we got to talking again. Was able to have a very long conversation. Nice, you know, interesting philosophical conversation. Stuff that we talked about before. Um, stuff that, uh, you know, we've talked... It was about religion. Um, talking about... Um, You know what we view Christianity to be, and how I brought up my good, good version of God, or bad version of God, good version of Satan concept, and talking about how. When there's corruption and when there's things that are bad within the within religion and things that it's doing that is wrong and bad, and but because Christian Christians can't see that it's that what they're doing is wrong and bad because they've been taught something, and they can't wane from that because of what they believe to be true, because of what's written down in a book. Or how it's being interpreted by being in the book. Um, that's what I have a problem with. That's why, as a Christian, you know, as a when I was a Christian, my dad would. Every, you know, anything that looked to be devilish, anything that looked to be, you know, th something he thought of the devil, you know, I could not enjoy that. But it was just mythology, and it was just something, because all other kids did it too, you know. They had the, you know, we had the story of the kid that killed his friend over Dungeons and Dragons, so now, you know. See, I don't really think my friend has been interested in pursuing that stuff to find out whether or not it's there or what you know that it's not in fact true they just accept what they've been told um, but I told my friend I said if if my dad met you or if you knew of him you know and knew the things that you enjoyed, and it's like, well, he'd say, you're not a Christian. And but yet he is a he's a Christian, but he likes what he likes, and, and he says he even knows that some of the things that he likes and enjoys. Probably, you know, like if you said to your preacher that you're doing this stuff that he would condemn so that's wrong and that's bad. He says, but I've, I haven't had the conviction yet to change that. And it's like, okay, how is that possible if you're a Christian, though? If you believe what you believe, how do you not have those convictions? So that's where I got in. It's like, People don't even know and don't even really know their own belief system. They don't even really subscribe to the same belief system that they think they do. I found it very strange that, and and it is very, but it, I mean, it's good to me. It's strange because it's it's not what I grew up with. It's not how I knew things to be. But even as those belief systems are now, you would think that those things would still be there. 
Um, but even within our own congregation, when I was growing up, those things were there that there, people didn't care about stuff like that, you know, either. It was mainly my dad. It was, you know... I, it's weird to me that... How... I don't... I don't... See, I don't reject God. There's nothing to reject. I mean... I'm not saying that by saying that he doesn't exist. I'm just saying that he doesn't exist in the way that we think he exists, if he exists. Um, because obviously we have two different versions of it. Um, so for me, it's like I'm basically the same person he as he is in a lot of ways in the way of things that I enjoy, and I am an agnostic because I have tried to defend those things of which that I enjoy. So, but because I've understood Christianity to be a certain way in order to be what he is, like he is, as he calls himself a Christian, I have to be an agnostic. I guess because the reason why I've gone as far as I have is because of the journey I've had to take to basically discover that the stuff that I was being told that is bad is not really bad, but in doing so, you know, I, I lost my faith in God as I used to believe in him. Um, now, see, I believe in the possibility of a God, but I believe, but I, I, th we're way too primitive as a society to establish a worship system around him. And like I said, if God is up there, and if everything everybody else is saying is true, you know, with if Christianity is in fact the right way that I'm still, you know, a part of that. I'm still a Christian. I have asked Jesus to forgive me of my sins. But, and my friend said that, you know, it's like, I sin every day, and I do things every day, I have to ask for forgiveness every day. It's... It, it, it just... And what's funny to me about that is... is you know, God is not, if if you believe what you believe in the way that God is, it's like Jesus as being your savior, he's not fire insurance. That's not what he's supposed to be about. Um... Because he has a very, you know, it seems to me like he has a very flippant way of, it's like he doesn't really, It to me, it seems like to me, I mean, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know what he does exactly, but it seems to me that, you know, that type of way of going about things is not, that's not what I was taught, you know, as being a Christian. I mean, I basically did everything that he did and continued to do, but every day I was, to my dad, I was going to hell, you know? And as a person with Asperger's Syndrome, how is it that I, you know, it's like, okay, basically the ultimatum is, is either choose your, your uh, temporal happiness <clears throat> or choose hell. That's stupid. That doesn't sound like anything. That sounds way too friggin' complicated. It doesn't sound. It doesn't sound right to me. It doesn't. And see, my friend, he's had like a a good. He's had loving. He had loving parents. 
or apparently, well, I mean, my parents still love me, but they love me a little too much, uh, too overprotective and too rigid. But I think he has never had a reason to not be a Christian. He has never had a reason because, well, yeah, it would be easy to be a Christian if you could just do what my friend does. Yeah, that's no problem. <laughs> I mean, but like I told him, it's like if you, my dad knew you, knew what you, he would say you're not a Christian. You know, uh... So, you know, it's very interesting how perspective of what one's own life is, and then when you see somebody else's life, how differing it can be, and how a lot of the ways that those things come about, how that can factor into all, to the, you know, ultimate result, and when you think you know everything, that all that's needed to know, then somebody like me comes along and, you know, stirs up the pot. But like I said, I told him, I said, in a lot of ways, we're very much the same. I've just had to fight a bigger battle to get where I've been. And in the process, I've eliminated a lot of ridiculous things that don't matter. Because I think it's just something made up by man, and he thinks so. Oh, but that's just the de he thinks that's the devil talking. It's like no, because to me, if sin is there, it should have a current temporal, you know, current temporal realm thing going on that would be evident outside of religion. If you, because you could, you know, there's so many things that we think are ridiculous that we, that other religions consider sinful. You know, we, we eat beef, but, but under Hindu religion, that's, that's a mortal sin to eat your ancestor. Um, or with the Jews, you know, it's, it's against their religion to eat pork. But that's against, that doesn't matter to us. So how can all these things that don't really ultimately matter or how, how can it matter to one religion and not matter to another? I think that's where the wrinkle is. How is it, it's just, I mean, I don't know if this correlates to anything, but like George Carlin said, about prostitution makes no sense to make something illegal to sell that you can give away for free that that's legal to give away for free that's just i mean that's just facts that's just that doesn't you know it's 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 that if you start if you in his mind he hasn't really brought, he doesn't really, he doesn't want to challenge anything that he's always believed to be true, and I understand that. But when you, but when you have had a life like I've had, and you've had troubles, and you've had problems, and, and your life is being torn apart, because of it, it's like, well, God doesn't want this, so why is it even a problem? That's where my wrinkle, that's where it started. That's why, as a person who's an Aspergian, that's why I started asking myself these questions and started doing research. Because it's, easy, it's really easy just to believe what you're told. But I've tested, but I've tested things things that which people have just always believed because they've been told it without knowing why that's not how you should even approach anything especially religion that's why people fly planes into our buildings without 
believing what they believe without even questioning what they're if they're doing what they're doing is right or wrong that means if you believe something and you you just know it to be true because you've been told it that's not that's not that's that doesn't even make sense even if that doesn't make any sense God's a logic if God's there he's a logical being if he is what he is from what people have said you know everything should be self-evident if you're an intelligent person you know on the subject of homosexuality you know I'm a straight man um, but I've kind of seen my Asperger's syndrome as being somewhat similar in the way that there's things about the way that my mind works that I have to choose it if I have to choose being happy or choose hell there's something wrong with that equation because ultimately homosexuality doesn't hurt anybody except for the people who believe that it is bad because there's been ev because of the evidence of societies that accept it that it doesn't hurt it doesn't it's they've integrated into their society according to the law and according to any law of God that's something that's sinful because you something would be sinful because it puts a strain on other people as a society if it doesn't hurt people, ultimately, if it only hurts them because of what they think is bad, it, then if that's all it is, that's stupid because other people... Now, people would probably, probably try to say, uh, um, it's like, well, what if a person has to be happy to be a murderer? Well, that's... Uh, <laughs> Uh, that's that's kind of self-explanatory. Um, because murderers don't integrate themselves well into society. That's self-evident. It's not the same thing as, as somebody who's gay. Um, now, with my Asperger syndrome... It's a little bit different because you're dealing with social norms. So therefore, I just have to find the social norm that works for me and not be around a social unit that doesn't like what I do. That's that's as simple as anything. So, But I'm sure we'll have continuing conversations and I will keep you updated.